we will now see the connection table analysis and correlation together now these questions actually present an interesting challenge because of their very nature as the name tells you here table analysis these are questions where all of the data is present to you in the form of a table the question then becomes how do we infer correlation from tables we already saw how that's you know very clearly seen on a line graph is it going up is it going down Hello there. If you are a GMAT aspirant, I'm sure you want to find out how to ace this test. What do you have to do to get your dream score? Well, in this video, I will help you take one step towards that success. We will discuss a very important concept, correlation, and see its application on the GMAT. A lot of people know correlation out of this in the real world, but how to really use that conceptual knowledge here? is the trick you have to have the right skills to be able to ace questions on this so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail well understanding correlation is crucial for analyzing data in various gmat questions say for example you're talking about table analysis questions which form a part of the data insights section you have graphics interpretation you have msr you have two part analysis right now we will focus on this one question type table analysis the data is present in the form of a table and this is where we're really going to see correlation questions so that's the agenda for the video seeing correlation applied in table analysis questions now in this video what are we going to do we will take one official question which is 645 plus level gfe question and we'll teach you a foolproof method that not only works on this difficult question but also on all other official questions that test correlation now for your information this question that we are going to discuss only 32% of all test takers have been able to answer this correctly but before we get there let's have a recap of correlation so what is the simple definition it's just that correlation is a statistical measure that describes how two variables change with respect to each other so if one variable is increasing is the other one also increasing correspondingly or is the other one decreasing correspondingly similarly if one variable is decreasing is the other one also decreasing or is the other one increasing this this connection between two variables you always have to have two data sets to be able to really see this you know one data set is moving in this direction what is the direction that the other one is following so that's the simple idea Now there are three types of correlation and that's the next thing we are going to discuss. So types of correlation here. First type I'm going to talk about is positive correlation. What is positive correlation? It occurs when two variables move in the same direction, which means that as one variable increases, the other variable also increases and as one variable decreases, the other one also decreases. This relationship often if you try to represent this on a line graph, you will see that these points will be sloping upward as your x is increasing, your y is also increasing. if you see it this way but if you see it in the opposite way you will see that as your x values are decreasing as you come from right to left your y values also come down accordingly so they are moving in the same direction we'll talk more about this graphical representation but first let's talk about all three types the second type is negative correlation now while you saw in positive correlation that the two variables move in the same direction here things are opposite they move in opposite directions what does that mean for us it means that if one variable increases the other one decreases and vice versa if one decreases the other one increases this time if you try to plot points it will be like this so if you read it from the left to the right you will see that your x values are increasing as you go from left to right but your y values are decreasing and if you see it from right to left then as your x values are going down the y values are actually going up as you move from the right of the chart to the left again we'll talk more about this and finally the third type of correlation what's this third type this is where you really have no correlation so positive result negative result 
this is where there's just nothing so what does it mean to have no correlation well these are cases where there is no clear relationship between the movements of the two variables in in this case you will feel sometimes okay this is increasing maybe that one is increasing but suddenly it'll be like no 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 it's decreasing so there will be no clear pattern so if you see this on a graph see how it's going to look it'll be just all over the place you will not be able to really tell a pattern that my x increased so y increased or y decreased this is where you have no correlation now i'm going to show all of these on a simple graphic you will see all three of them here very neatly laid out so again as i said if you only observe positive correlation you will see that as your x values are increasing if you read it from left to right it's also going upward the points are rising as they're moving to the right so positive correlation while here on the next one you see if you see from left to right as your x values are increasing increasing the points are coming downward which means your y is decreasing and this final one it's just going everywhere i can't see clear patterns here as to what is happening when x is increasing is y going up is y going down so these are the three types of correlation that you need to understand now eg math students learn these concepts in a specialized correlation module in this one they learn they practice they assess their conceptual understanding thoroughly how through three concept files that you see here 6.123 these are where you really learn your concepts you practice those concepts and then you apply everything all of your conceptual understanding on two application files now if you're interested we would be glad to talk more about this show more interest on this and we'll be back with another video all right now that we've had this nice recap and we've talked about concepts let's actually come back to the topic talk about table analysis and correlation but first just table analysis questions now a lot of students they face issues with respect to timing on the dei the data insights section this is where table analysis is there to help you these questions offer excellent time saving opportunities so eg math students who master the process that you're going to see in this video they are able to answer ta questions not only accurately but also efficiently using the right amount of time so mastering this process is the key to achieving high ability in the di section of the test so that's what we're going to discuss now we will now see the connection table analysis and correlation together now these questions actually present an interesting challenge because of their very nature as the name tells you here table analysis these are questions where all of the data is present to you in the form of a table the question then becomes how do we infer correlation from tables we already saw how that's you know very clearly seen on a line graph is it going up is it going down but how do you do that in a table now in this video we will take two official questions you will learn through them time saving strategies for effectively identifying correlations in tabulated data so let's just get started i'm going to first give you an official question to solve here just pause the video and try your hand at this play when you're done all right and i'm sure you realize that the statement which was of interest to us is only the third statement this is the only one which is on correlation and we will focus our attention on only this one so this is the part of the question that we are really interested in now how do we go about solving such questions there are some steps you have to follow first step is to identify which two data sets are we even going to analyze there are so many columns here you see which columns am i interested in so that's step first now remember one thing correlation is the analysis of how one data set relates to another remember and that's why you always will have two data sets this is something which is not on other statistical concepts like average or median which work only on a single data set so understand this difference this is this is a fundamental difference between correlation and the others so first task again is to identify the two data sets let's try and do that here and how will you do that thoroughly reading the question very very carefully reading everything now here we need to evaluate correlation between number of public museums 
and number of visitors per year. So let's look at the table here and try to find which columns are we interested in. Now again, one thing here, you will not always see the terms that are used in the statement exactly reflected in the table headers. For example, number of public museums, this is the first thing here. In the table, this is actually titled like this, it's under ownership and it's public. So not the same exact title. Similarly, if you see the second thing, which is number of visitors per year, this is labeled how? This is labeled as visitors per year in the table. Now, they obviously mean the same here and all you needed to do was a minor mental translation to align what was there in the statement and what is there in the table. So, that's one important thing. This is the first step you have to be absolutely sure of so that now from the steps coming on, you are absolutely focused on just these columns and you're not overwhelmed by all of the data. Now, let's see the next step. So after identifying the data sets, remember to sort one of them. Without sorting, you cannot draw inferences about directionality of the correlation, you know, which one is going where. Now, remember, when you had a line chart, obviously, as you saw values going from left to right, you knew that X is definitely increasing. All you had to see accordingly was were the things going up or down to see what was happening with Y. But that's not what you're going to have here. The table will have values all over the place. So when you sort it like this, you will at least have that one axis if you see the connection in this sorted fashion. So in this table, one sorting we'll have to do explicitly. So suppose I choose this first column here, the public ownership column, and we will now sort this. So I'll first list this down. Second step is to sort one data set any one you can choose and you sort this. Now, as a result, what are you going to see? This is our sorted table for you. Again, as I said, public ownership, this is the column that we sorted. And now all of the values here are in ascending order, smallest value on top. And as you go down, the values are increasing. We're ready and this is your second step complete. Now, finally, you start observing the directionality of the other data set. See, this one is already sorted. No, we just arranged it. So, with respect to this, now we observe what's happening in the second data set. All right, so this is your next step written. How do you go about this? Now, should you look at every single data point? No, that would be too much, too time consuming. The efficient way to think about this is consider sets of values instead of individual values. To do that, just divide your entire data set into two halves. See what I'm doing here? It's eight values and I'm splitting them here, four and four. This is your top half. This is your bottom half. Now, because we arranged the public ownership column, I know my smaller values are here in the top half and the big section is here with the greater values in the bottom half. Accordingly, we'll see what's happening in visitors per year. Now, these values are not very uh, nice to look at. So I'm just going to approximate them. Let's just read them in millions. This is about 2 million, then 11, then 2 and 10, 19, 12, 56, and 14. Okay, what do you observe as a general trend? You should be able to see that these values in the top half, just 2 and 10 and 2 and 11, these are smaller compared to what you have in the lower half, 19 and 56 and 40 mainly. Now, this overall trend tells you that even visitors per year is increasing as I go from top to bottom in my table. It was increasing for public ownership because of how I sorted. Now, because they're moving in the same direction, I know it's positive correlation. Now, at this stage, if you're wondering, this was perfectly always increasing the visitors per year. Why did we just look at halves like this? Well, if you are thinking like that and you feel that going from 2 to 11 was good because that was an increase, but then when we went from 11 to 2, that again showed a decrease. So this data point here is problematic. And so again, if you continue, 2 to 10 is good, but then 
okay 10 to 19 is also good but then 19 to 12 is where you would find your next problem and these inconsistencies if they make you say that the data is not positively correlated because it's not always increasing then that's a very common mistake people make you have to avoid falling into such a pitfall understand that correlation is about the overall trend not about individual values okay you just have to understand how real life has so many in inconsistencies and you should be used to that. This is what you learn in the course also through so many examples that it really becomes a part of you. Now, let's just summarize all of our learnings. What are the key strategies we learn? And then I leave you with a practice question. Here we go. So first step, identify which two data sets you're looking at and do not expect a direct correspondence between what your statements have and what the table column headers are. You will have to actively apply your translate process skill to really find the right columns. Then once you find them, you sort one of the columns. Without sorting, you'll just end up wasting time and sorting will give you clear direction in what you're doing. Then comes the third step where you assess the directionality of the second column the one that you did not split and for this what you do is you uh, you did not sort for this what you do is you split this column into two halves and then you see what the trend is what kind of values you have in the top half what you have in the lower half if it happens that your top half has smaller values and the lower half has greater values it shows that these values are overall increasing so this hints at positive correlation but if your top half has the big values and lower is small that means your values are overall decreasing and this would hint at negative correlation and if you see that both halves have similar numbers only you can't really tell the bigger ones or the smaller ones then this would mean no correlation that's it so this is how you will see your directionality and one major thing is do not let minor inconsistencies affect you remember how the real world is imperfect so do not look for perfection here finally just look at all of the steps here in this neat set of takeaways this is everything that we do every time and now it's time for your practice question. Let's see that. This is the official question that you have to solve. So make sure you pause the video, try it right away and put your answers in the comments here. In fact, not just the answer, show your work. Write down the output of every single step. You know all of the steps we are following. When your output comes out correct from every step, you will feel very confident about the entire process. And what is next for you after all of this? I'll talk about that a little bit further honing your understanding here sometimes these tables that you saw they include another thing instead of just these values they include average as well an average row this is something that will give you additional time saving opportunities right now i'm sure you don't understand stay tuned for upcoming videos where we are going to cover this till then happy learning